What's up, YouTube? I believe it's day nine right now. Um, I'm going to talk about the Rhizome today. I said I was going to talk about Slavoj Zizek's writing style today, but um, I, didn't, I didn't check out a book because I'm studying for a Greek history midterm that I have to take tomorrow. So I can get that book, so I'll probably talk about that tomorrow. Now. Tomorrow. So let's talk about about this Jill Lose that I was talking about in day five, I think, four days ago. Uh, let's talk about that, because I was talking about the rhizome, and this is, I'm talking about a uh, blog post on somebody that I found a long, long time ago, or not, not a long time ago, but a while ago, and he very well explains, he very well explains, uh, what a, a rhizome, a rhizomatic thinking is. So, let's go to that, shall we? I'm in Google, Google Reader again. Um, this is, by the way, this, here I'll just go to the website. Again, this is, I probably talked about this, but this is Doc DLP's blog. Uh, he's a, I believe he's a doctor in philosophy, and here he talks about, see, it's called rhizomatic awesomeness, and, uh, he was talking about, like, how, how rhizomes are roots, and it's ba basically a bio, bi biological, uh, plant. But that or that's like kind of like ginger is a rhizome. It, gi ginger it has rhizomatic root, so um, as opposed to a tree, which is so like here he re he understands the de lose and he creates he creates he understands that there's a arborescent versus rhizomatic uh, um, understanding, and like he takes like you know arborescent basically has roots and then. What comes up, like I said earlier, in five days or four days ago, what comes up is a tree. So you'll see a tree there, and then what you see in arborescent thinking is you'll see the tree, not the roots at all. So you'll be focusing on the tree, and then that's basically straightforward thinking, and the edge just goes upward from there, and doesn't it doesn't come back or it doesn't. Doesn't doesn't recreate other lines or doesn't do anything else. Just goes straight up from the roots, and that's all arborescent thinking is, which is fine. But um, rhizomatic thinking is something different. It's like um, a rhizome is a root where this is a good picture for it. Kind of like here's the rhizome. This is the whole entire root, and then you'll see these shoots off. That'll shoot off from the main root and then more will shoot off from that other shoot off so so they are there are lines of segmentarity that will come and then they'll start and then they'll end and then new lines of segmentarity will form again and then what will happen was was these lines of segmentarity will deterritorialize from that line and then they will go on a different area kind of like Kind of like this is a de a deterritorial a deterritorialization. This is these are other deterritorializations, and so is this, so is this. So but then, what makes the rhizome or rhizomatic thinking uh, different and cool is that those de de deterritorialized lines of cemetery will reterritorialize back to um, back to the main line. Kind of like it doesn't really show it here, because like, but what will happen is that this will come back. Like, this wouldn't be like this unless the unless a certain line of segmentarity re-territorialized later. So, like, this is a this is a ginger root right here. That's a, that's an example of a biological rhizome. But what we're what we're thinking about is the rhizomatic thinking. So. Here's a here's an example of a chain of arborescent thinking. So let's think about cologne. Okay, I will I will think about clones and I'll think of all these other kind of of what clone is and what a clone will do for me, which is one. And then I will 
examine, I will examine Jovan Musk, and then I'll think about how, what that smells like and what that does, and then I'll go up to Curve, and then that'll be something else, and then I'll think about different kinds of other clones. So I really, in a, in a chain of arborist thinking, I won't ever leave the subject of, of cologne. Ever. Uh, and then it'll just go upward and upward, possibly even, possibly more complicated, or possibly more uh, diverse, but still within the same line. Um, and I wouldn't call this uh, this line of arborist thinking, I wouldn't call it a line of segmentarity, because it's, it's like a, a ray, basically, because it goes up from the root and goes upward. But what's, what's more important here is the rhizomatic thinking. So, um, I like to think about rhizomatic thinking either in the way that Doc DLP thought of it on this post, or, or just thinking totally, because, I mean, I, I like to think about it, I like to think about it in just thinking in general, or searching the internet is, is another good way to, th to think about it. So here's what he wrote as a symbol, as a, or as a, as a example of rhizomatic pattern of thinking. I taught, I taught, I taught at a college in California for a while while I met a bunch, a bunch of students. Some of them were friends with this guy I don't think I ever had in one of my classes, but he was a cool guy. That guy in this case is Jeff, is Jeff Lepine. He has a website called mindblowingwonderfulness.com. Somewhere I added, his, I added him as a friend on Facebook, he, so he occasionally pops up in my Facebook news feed. Like today, for instance, he was, he was announcing a cool theater thing. So I follow his Facebook page post. So I follow his Facebook post to his Facebook page. So I look under the, his, his info tab to see where he's at currently. I discover his aforementioned website. On, on said website, he has reposted a thing from another thing, from, from another blog, hyperbole and a half. I read that reposted thing and find it hysterical, so I click over to, to that site. There I read a bunch of other posts in their about page, which is awesome and, and involves unicorns, which makes me think of Emily, who likes unicorns and writes for a gossip blog called Evil Beat. So I check on her blog and discover Emily recent, recently wrote a post about George Clooney and his hatred of Facebook. Okay, think about this. Let's stop here. This he was he was on. He he, he was thinking about this guy, about this guy Jeff Jeff Lapine because all these people from this California college likes like this guy, and then he was he found this guy on Facebook. So then he got to he, he talks about things. He 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 gets away from Facebook to to uh, to uh, mindblowingwonderfulness.com, and then he ends up going to hyperbole and a half, and then he goes to Evil Beat, and then he go, he goes to Emily's webpage on e on Evil Beat, and think about George Clooney as hatred of Facebook. That's rhizomatic right there because what happened was what happened there was. Um, you have Facebook, right? He was thinking about this guy Jeff Lapine on, on Facebook, and then what happened was he ended up going to Mind Blowing Wonderfulness, was Lapine's website. And then he went to uh, Hyperbole, Hyperbole and a Half, which is another, another website. Then goes to um, Evil Beat, which is the, the this girl Emily that he's talking about, and then talks about George Clooney and his hatred of Facebook. And that that you then that that reterritorializes back to Facebook. That's your rhizo. That's or that's rhizomatic thinking. Um, be, that could be thought of in like just some people's thoughts also. So, if, if you don't understand this, there's a link in the in the S bar. Um, so you can look at this and think about it thoroughly because he wrote, he writes a lot more here. And then it just thinks it makes you think about this picture right here and how. When he's thinking about Facebook, and he ends up getting back to Facebook when he went through so many different other things. All right, so this guy's blog post, and then the hyperbole and a half, mind blowing wonderfulness, and evil beat. I mean, they're kind of off topic and other stuff, but they're they're involved in this guy's rhizomatic thinking. He calls it rhizomatic awesomeness. So this is just a clear understanding of what Blues and Guattari are saying in this book. So. I hope you have an awesome, great day, and good day.